That should be alright. So, as you were just about to say, <laughs> how did we meet, right? So I've got three scenarios. Right, okay. I'll tell you them, and then you tell me uh, Which if one? one's <laughs> correct, or if I'm completely wrong, right? Right, cool. So, it's either, because we worked at Prudential together, yep. right, just meeting in the corridors or the canteen. Yeah, yeah. Second one would be that I recorded your band, and I think they were called Bad Elephant. That's right, Is yeah, that you right? did do that. Right, yeah. or... The one which I think it might be is Tuesday night in Ruth and Ebers when Liam McGrandles first started gigging uh, and maybe you came along and we just... That might be, it might be the Tuesday night thing because I think uh, when you recorded Us As Bad Elephant, See, I, I already knew you. I'm I don't sure. remember how, I got in, how you got in touch with me to record you. Yeah, I think I just, I think we were just chatting and... You'd said you did. You were able to record some stuff, so I think I pretended that was a sound then. engineer, and it was a complete lie. <laughs> no, no, at all. But um, so, do I you think the true thing? Did you work with? Did you work in the same team as Gary Pritchard? Did, he, did I meet you through him? Maybe no. no I know the okay. name. I don't and know. We who were it never is. in the same team, so I think it was maybe Liam McGrandall's. Mr. Like, McGrandall going and seeing him and stuff like that. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> because I was thinking about that. I was like, how did we actually meet? Because it must be, I reckon about. 12 years ago, 13. Longer, yeah. Maybe longer? I think so, yeah. I think it must be, because... Uh, and what happened yeah. to Bad Elephant? Because well, there, there, there was a four-track demo that was made, and I've still got it <laughs> somewhere. still got it, I know. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, there, was, there was funny stuff with that band that was like, nobody could ever quite agree on releasing stuff. Somebody was always no happy with something with every track. Did you still see any of them? Uh, a bit. Um, Full enough, I was messaging Tony, the guitarist, Today, and we were reminiscing about, yeah, yeah, we were reminiscing about Bad Elephant songs and stuff, because I've had one running around in my head for a couple of days. I think he, uh, some good songs. years ago, I think it was, he came up to me at a gig. Oh, right. And um, I think it was him, but I couldn't remember his name or that, uh, but I'm sure it was him, but I, I do remember, like I think he, guy. he was actually quite a good singer <laughs> yep, as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was good. And uh, then there was a, a female on the drums. Yep, Michelle. And Hill. your bass player, I can't even remember the bass player. But so. you know what, we recorded a... Uh, this place in Stirling and I drove past it the other day. It's been there forever and it's gone. <laughs> Random rhythms. It's Random funny. rhythms, that was uh, it. Whenever I go past it, I always feel a bit sad it's gone, even though it was just full of old and... I just hot. remember it was a, a recording <laughs> studio, but but the swinging doors, there was a bit of gap like that. Uh, I was like, it wasn't exactly soundproof. You could like see right through. You could like hand each other cups of tea through the uh, doors without opening them. I remember when we stopped practicing there actually, and we did practice there for absolutely years. And the, th the funny thing about it was it, it did have really good sound because it was purpose built. So they yeah, properly yeah. like had. It well, used to be a toilet. Kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of like <laughs> what you've got. You, they had the soft walls and everything. Oh, everywhere. It was, wasn't as fancy as this. No, it wasn't as fancy. But <laughs> it, at one point it had been kind of kitted out properly. But eventually, I think there was a leak in one of the roofs. And we were worried about it falling down on top of us. And then it was just that right, strange so. thing where after years the scales were lifted from our eyes and we started actually looking at the place. <laughs> and you know how in a recording booth and stuff you'd have the, the, the glass mm -hmm. and then there's usually a the control room type there's room. usually a gap and then more glass. Aye. We went and looked over at that and there was just like all this furry mould growing up between the panes of glass. The whole place That's was riddled enough. the way just I don't know. I don't so know if we reckon catch some So we reckon we first met just hanging about, hanging about years something hanging like that, about yeah. neighbours. Yeah, 15 years ago sounds about right, probably. Yeah. But what most people don't know <laughs> is there was another band before we even get into this. The band that never was. <laughs> I, I, I still, Almost was. I still talk to Liam about this scene. This is a mythical <laughs> legend of a band that nobody even knows about. But we'll one release day. that. We'll release the demos one day and it'll, it'll take over the world. And, it, and nobody knows. No, no. You're going, you're going by the the lovely name of Andrew Viper these days. Yeah, no. However, so civilized. back in the day, <laughs> you were Randy Viper <laughs> and we were just the snakeskins. That was it, yeah. I think it was just because... Uh... And there's that, I've, again, I've actually got a picture somewhere, so there's one picture that exists of <laughs> Randy Viper and the snakeskins <laughs> and Drifty Neighbours. Brilliant. Aye, because I think it was just that we decided to, the three of us decided to have a few jams together and all that. That's right, in my living room. Aye, and, um, and then... I think you'd made some comment about because I I'm pretty sure I had long hair at the time, which was just Aye, a mess. I didn't have any hair at the time. And a daft beard, which is still around sometimes. And uh, it was I think you made a comment that 
he's the guy that looks like the rock star. He's like, he's no Andy <laughs> Viper. He's Randy Viper. No, no. <laughs> just went and just spiraled I can't, for I can't there. take credit for it. I'm pretty sure that was McGrandles that Jake came up with, Liam. with that. Yeah. He's like that. Randy Viper, that sounds sick. as <laughs> fuck. Let's go with that. <laughs> right, so, first question. Okay. Right? Growing up, hmm. what music were you into? How did it start out? Did it, did it, see, for me, yeah. Mold Man. You go on, Mo, Mold, <laughs> Mold Man has got a pretty good musical taste. And it's just a wee boy sitting in the car. He's putting yeah. on, back then it was tapes. Put yep, on tapes, TV right? <laughs> but he was like, it was like The Doors, Rolling Stones, Beatles, U2, Credence, cool. all that sort of thing. So that's kind of how I got into music. Yeah. And then obviously you become a teenager and all of a sudden you you get your own influences and your pals show you new stuff and that. Is that kind of your It's similar. Uh, yeah. I think there's I think there's sort of two phases with my music stuff almost, which was um like you, my parents stuff. Yeah. Listening to Simon and Garfunkel and the Beatles and a bit of the Stones and things like that. Just uh, lots of stuff that they listen to the police, I remember we had a police. You still album listen to and, that and I still I've kind of come full circle in a way yeah. because I listened to all their stuff and I just used to, I think I was just too influenced by the stuff they said, yeah. I just used to dismiss anything that was out currently as rubbish. Uh. <laughs> and probably a lot of it was, but I was also dismissing quite a lot of good stuff. And then there was a sort of, not exactly a flip, but uh, I got into the kind of Britpop thing. It was through my brother. He got into Oasis. This is funny because this, is, this, is, this is actually going to come back later. Yeah, I, so keep this in mind, right? I thought Oasis, the first time I heard them, I thought that was rubbish. And then he got into them and just the more I heard it, and then I started to hear like Shed 7 and the Blue Tones and I so started you, to get more current. Aye, so you're a year younger than me, so you're like the same age. You were a teenager right as Britpop yeah. was starting out. Yeah, like I, I kind of almost missed it. The like, perfect age by the time, much for it. By the time I got really big into it, it had almost passed a bit. I was a little bit not that cool at school to be listening to that stuff anymore. It had just about gone, but well, I, it's I, cool just, again. I just that, loved That's when it. you know you're yeah, getting old, because yeah, it's yeah. cool again. Yeah, I loved all those <laughs> bands, and then eventually, I, and I remember I used to really dislike, probably like a lot of the stuff that you really did like as a kid. I used to really dislike sort of metal and stuff like rock stuff, like sort of shouty stuff or whatever, but eventually I guess I progressed and started to listen to some of that yeah. stuff as well. I still don't listen to heavy, hardcore stuff, but you know, I got into Nirvana and the Foos and things like that eventually. So here's well a question after. for you. What was the first album you ever bought with your own money? I don't mean like a Christmas mm. present from oh, a parent no. or, or, you know, something like that. Like the first one that you went into, our price or whatever it was back then, and <gasps> you actually handed over your, your hard earned money from your pocket money or whatever. And, what was the first, can you remember what it was that you I bought? I don't know if I can remember because I've always memorised the first one that I got, which was a, but it was a Christmas present. <laughs> so Aye, I but I, I'm, I'm staying away from that because they're yeah. embarrassing. <laughs> well, no, no, this one was not too bad. Well, I mean, some it, people would think it was embarrassing, but it was a different class by Pulp. And it was... That's not bad. I thought you were going to say, like, I think cause I'd, greatest hits. I, I think because I delayed for quite a long time and just listened to my parents' stuff and all the right. 60s Motown and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That, eh, uh, by the time I decided what I wanted, it was actually not too bad. <laughs> oh, right. okay. But I don't know what I first went in and bought myself. That's a good question. I'll have to have a think about it. I'd, it would be some, it would be some indie thing like the Blue Tones or something like that. But it's my friend. I always remember it. 90, it was 1991 back in the day. Yeah. And uh, my friend Martin came down to the house, and I'm got, I've got you two and everything playing just yeah. like he's like pops this into my tape player. I'm like I don't know what this is, but I love it. And it was it was a, a Metallica album. All oh, right. But, Aye. but I was like right next week. I'm way up to like, I think I was up in Cumbernauld and I was like, right mum, can I go into it? It was an like, hour price, remember that? Yeah, right? yes. And he goes in there, buys a cassette tape of the album. And we ended up, it was like, I'd buy one, he'd copy it, he'd buy one, and I'd get a copy. And you <laughs> kind of just built it like that. And then I remember the first CD that I got was an Iron Maiden one. The only reason I bought right. it was because it came free with the video of the same concert. <laughs> 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 oh no, I, back when you just went out and bought stuff, eh? It's just now it's all no. sort of available or potentially available. But So see, um, obviously you're getting into Britpop. Yeah. I'm assuming is that what made you want to pick up a guitar? Aye, eventually. I, I didn't 
I didn't. Uh, and what age pick were up you? A guitar straight away. I didn't pick up a guitar until I was nineteen, actually. Really? Um, I played the piano when I was younger, so I had some understanding of music. Right. Um, I did. I, I stuck with the piano for about three or four years or something. I think I was even the whole working two hands. Split, yeah, split I mean, in I mind. kind of got there eventually, and um, yeah, I think I was actually doing okay at it, but. It was, uh, there's a funny thing out on the East Coast, I don't know if you guys know about this, but um, on a Friday at school you get half day. It's still, was, it's still the case, it's just in Edinburgh and surrounding areas. I wasn't, I wasn't privileged, I, I went to Denny High. You I, don't, get I, don't you, I don't you get it anywhere else, <laughs> but the thing was my piano lesson was on a Friday afternoon. Right. And it's just like Friday morning at, at high school, everybody's talking about what they're doing in the afternoon. And you're getting made to sit at this like, piano. Yeah, so eventually I, I, I quit, but... Do you wish I always you, wanted to play the guitar. Do you wish now you'd kept it up? I do. Uh, and I yeah. wish I'd taken music as well, because I also didn't do that, which I really wish I'd done. But um, eventually, I just thought I just thought about playing the guitar for years before I actually ever... Did you buy your first guitar, or, or was it like a present from your parents? Or? No, I did buy it. Um, I, I went away to uni, and there were a few people there that played the guitar and things, and I just thought, I've oh, sure, I've been wanting to do this for years, I really should. And uh, then I dropped out of uni. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a bit of time right. and I just, uh, it was my pal's wee brother actually, he's also my pal too, but at the time it was like, oh, right. it was just my pal's wee brother, but he played the guitar. So I just said to him, can you he A, help me choose a guitar mm -hmm. and B, teach me some stuff. So, so, is that, so you self-taught as in he taught you some stuff but yeah. everything else you learned along the way? Aye. Sort did, of, didn't uh, go to a teacher or anything? I went to a teacher at one point, uh, um, I got some basics for him and stuff like that, he got me started. Mm -hmm. You know, got me to the level of playing Wonderwall. Gary Bridges, if he's, <laughs> if he's watching mm. anyway. I don't know. Uh, no, well, it's from through Muscle Bar, where, oh, right, okay. uh, from where I'm from. And uh, he, he helped me pick this acoustic, and I got up to the sort of level of trying to play Oasis songs, because I was still into Oasis big time at that yep. point, so I really wanted to play all so these songs four, and listen four chords to. Perfected. I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, then. Self-taught for a while, and I think eventually, when I was sort of 22 or 23, I felt like it was a bit of a waste of time, and it, it was a, a conversation with my mum about how I was just going to quit it, and yeah. she's like, you know, where you go, well, I'll, I'll pay for some lessons for you, so that kind of, I, I got some lessons just for six or eight months, just to kind of I thought you were going keep to say, me into it. But. I thought you were going to say it was Liam that inspired you. <laughs> and it was just <laughs> the neighbours days to Liam, pick up the guitar again. Liam's got a lot to answer for, actually, because... Uh, <laughs> uh, um, that's what I hear, but it's not always good. <laughs> <laughs> he used to, uh, if he fancied a break, just sort of like get me up, and that's kind of how I was first playing in front of people, really. So. <laughs> Is that how you got into to doing gigs, kind of like... More or less, like there was an open mic. I used to go to which was run by JP, you know, JP at all. But um, uh, he used to run the open mic up at the settle, and I think that was the first time I actually got up and played. Um, um, but apart from that, I think it was kind of then I, later on I was in Black Static. But I think doing stuff on my own was that that's how I met Liam, and then after that I'd tend to pop into Tams when he was on, and if he wanted a break, I'd play a couple of songs because I couldn't have done Aye. two hours or anything so, at that so point. So what was so. Um, what was the, do you remember what the first song was you learned or the first couple of riffs that you were just like, I feel great, this actually sounds like the thing I'm listening to. I still don't think I can play it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just missed on acoustic chords. Was it the standard? Duh, 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 yeah, I'm duh, sure I learned duh, that pretty duh, quick. Duh. Yeah, yeah. That, that would have been a, an early one that Gary showed me. And I think I remember him showing me a whole lot of love, which I don't think I can play now but smells like team spirit was, was normally he had quite a mission a, for a me <laughs> yeah yeah uh, i think i've learned that at the time as well that was kind of he, he he showed me lots of riffs and stuff that he knew and uh, i had my little oasis chord book so at some point i don't think it was wonderwall was the first one that i managed to get through start to finish it was one of the other mm. ones i can't even remember and what back then it would have still been you would have been the same as me so it would have been trying to find a book with tab yeah. Because uh, you didn't have the internet or YouTube to go and sort of yeah. refer to, so it was trying to find, it was a nightmare trying to get actual books, because I can remember yeah. for ages, I remember picking the guitar up and I used to always get annoyed that, I was like, why is it that person can listen to the song and, and by ear, yeah. just figure it out, uh, but obviously music as time kind of things, goes on, yeah. you then figure it out yourself, yeah. but for a long time you're like, right, I need the book, I need the tabs. Yeah, yeah, I mean I think... I'm, I'm even now only just 
picking up bits of music theory, but um, yeah, if you don't learn any of that, then you are just memorising every single song, like memorising the chords in every single song, rather than thinking about whether it's Right, you know, I think I must have a good memory. It's probably then. likely to be a minor or a major chord. Or I think I must have a good memory because I, I don't know musical no, I mean, at I, all. Yeah, I, I know the very basics from YouTube, <laughs> mostly. Right. right, okay. So, what was the first? Did you say you. What was the first band you said you were in? Uh, Black Static. Did you start that or did you join it? No, I joined it. It was, uh, it was my, my pal Wiggy and, uh, and Sarah as well. They were. So they were a duo. it was already on the go? Yeah, they were a duo and uh, I met them through another pal of ours and, and, they, and they... Did you do I, any gigs? Yeah, we did a, we did a few, yeah. Um, I think I went to see them at the Fanky Hut. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> they were playing at the Fanky Hut. And I've heard many stories. Uh, did you never go? I, I've been, I've <laughs> been, I think, twice. Right. But was, just but from crazy. other people, some of the stories I'm just like Jesus. That, that's like a whole. <laughs> you could speak for hours about these stories. It was it was about as close as I think I'll ever get to one of these illegal raves <laughs> from, the, from the early nineties or something. It was kind yeah. of that sort of vibe. But yeah, they played that, and I went along to see them. And I think it was after I'd seen them as a duo played that that they yeah I got went out for a drink with them and got speaking to them and they said oh do you want to join and I was like I can't really play anything though I mean. I, I can play some chords, but yeah, that's yeah. what he's doing. But it kind of worked. With so were they doing originals, or was it covers, or both? They were doing a bit of both. Wiggy writes lots and lots of songs. Right. Uh, he already had. He's he's written hundreds, as far as I know. He's yeah, yeah. he's pretty prolific. <laughs> and uh, what were some of the covers? Yeah. Can you? Was it the zombie? Them? Was the the big one? Right. Um, we we had a bit of a reputation for doing zombie. <laughs> it was like the was that because closer. it was so good, or because it was so bad? No, I think we were. <laughs> I think we were pretty good at it. And, right. uh, uh, it tended to be the gig closer, or closer. Wiggy in particular was keen on doing kind of unusual covers and stuff like that. I'm trying to think what we did. I'm sure we did something by Muse and stuff that didn't really sound like it would normally so be. So you're on the guitar, song. yeah. The other guy's on sort of lead rhythm kind of guitar. We were both. Is the girl singing? Yeah, aye. We, we were, were both basically playing. Bass, no, no, that was it. It, it was, was just, just the three, three, th three piece, yeah, just the acoustic, which was. Sort of good and bad, um, it ruled us out at some gigs obviously, but I think it kind of ruled us so out. So you did ever get a drummer down the line or a bass player? or? Nah, we did speak about it a few times, but it just, I think it all And what age, are you, what age are you, about 20 or something? 21? Right, so I think I met Wiggy in 2006, I'm pretty sure. I'm so thinking if you learned, like 23, if you 24. got the guitar when you were about 19. Yeah, yeah, I feel, felt like I'd been playing for a while by then, but actually that's not that long at all. It was like... Three, four years. <laughs> so it was Bad Elephant after that? Yeah, so... And how, did, how did that come together? Um, I think that just came about from a conversation with Nicky Dams. I so did you know all those three other guys just, prior to the band starting? Just Dave, the bass player. Um, right. Tony would have been too young to get into Nicky Dams. Is <laughs> he, was, he, was sort of, he still at Playgroup? He's <laughs> like <laughs> ten years younger than me right. or something like that. So, um, so yeah, Black Static... Wiggy eventually got sick of it and left, and me and Sarah carried on for a while, but we sort of like decided that was that. And um, I started doing solo stuff mostly. Right. Um, and I think by that point, I did occasionally take a gig in Nicky Tams or something like that. I built up my little, from my little breaks with <laughs> Liam McGrandall's. Right. And I'm pretty sure it was Dave, the bass player, um, who said, Oh, I, I play with this young guy, and um, we're trying to start a band. Do you want to come along? So I went along and just joined their practice so and how eventually long? we got a drummer. In fact, I, I played football with Michelle, that was what it was. How long was that band on the go for? Bad Elephant was on the go for a while, I think it was about five or six years or something. And was it my demo that, that wrecked the band? <laughs> no, 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 we kept going. We kept, it was a, I mean, I actually remember what memories, I recorded eh? on, it was an old Korg 16 track. Right. You, you actually plug, you had 16 <laughs> inputs that you could plug it in. And that's how we done it. And I, I think uh, I think what we done was we mic'd all the drums up. Yeah. I think we recorded re recorded. I think we recorded the drums, bass, and rhythm guitar live. Yeah. But I think. Um, Maybe I, I think the drum after. only the drums were, were mic'd up, and then right. what we done was when they were recorded, we then layered everything. Right. On top, that kind of rings a bell because I think. I don't know. 
I think he's even came to my flat and re-recorded yeah. a, a guitar that didn't sound correct or uh, I think that may be mine. Like I that. think I, I remember coming around. Something was either out of tune of or it was um, a faulty lead of that, but we right. re-recorded it. And uh, it actually, it still sounds not too bad actually. Yeah, yeah. I think it. I, 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 I think at the time, you know, I was one of the ones that was like, yeah, let's just get it out now, you know. But well, you just need a demo to start was, getting, if you want to try and get gigs, you you need a few songs aye, recorded just was, so people can hear you and we you were, get your MySpace up and running. Aye, <laughs> I think we were a, I think we were a pretty decent band, but um, we liked to get a, everybody was involved in all decisions, which I think sort of slowed things down. I think sometimes... That's how you'd that's how you'd like things to be, but I think some Sometimes some of the just, bands that get somewhere maybe have a bit of a dictator that, that just says right, like, most bands final says me because otherwise nothing gets decided. Bands. Most <laughs> bands just run their course though. Yeah. It, I mean if every band that you started was successful was <laughs> just, it would everyone would do it because it'd be so easy. Yeah. But it was uh, my first kind of taste of songwriting though. I mean I'd had plenty of goes at writing songs and never ever really Sometimes I'd think, oh yeah, yeah, I've definitely finished the song, and then yeah. the next day I play it and go, that's awful. I don't. That's awful. I still do that. <laughs> oh yes, I still do that too. But but that was as far as I'd got. Yeah. And uh, but bad elephant, we we only performed originals. I mean, I think we sometimes mucked about the right. covers in the in the studio, but I don't think we ever performed a cover if I if I remember. Which um, is which was which was probably, probably I think I was quite, yeah I think I was quite pushy with that because. I just, I had nothing against doing covers, but I was doing entire covers gigs with my acoustic stuff on the side. And I was just a bit like, oh, I don't really want to go out and play covers. And plus, everybody does it. And just, I, I, I think some, a mix, a lot of bands go for a mix of like some covers and some originals, but there's that thing where people don't really listen to the originals because they're just waiting for the next cover or something. Depend, maybe so. it depends how good depends. the original is. Yeah, true. Yeah, Aye, if it's just not good enough, then that's, uh, that's true. So, See, getting into was that actually how you got into doing the pubs, the pub gigs, yeah, all covers like the cover songs, right? Yeah, yeah. Was it actually just going along, seeing Liam play, seeing whoever else play on different nights, and then just getting a wee opportunity to go up and play a couple of songs, maybe if they're on a break or something like that? Yeah, it was open mic nights and going up on Liam's breaks and things like that, and Whitty as well. I think I used to sometimes go up on his breaks and that sort of thing. And uh, I just, if I knew who was playing, I'd just pop in just to get the chance to play a hey, couple chance of songs. I can pick up your guitar um, and play a few. Um, there was that, and I was always trying to learn songs as well. How did you f- you feel like see doing it the first few times? Like oh, just terrified. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just nerves. Yeah, so I remember. I, I definitely remember the first time getting up at the settle in, and it was the same for a <coughs> few times after that. Yeah. Just like. It was one of my legs just uncontrollably shaking. Like and this, guy's, really, this, guy's, really this guy's stomping really hard now. He's just he's just shaking. Yeah, and I think I got through whatever I was playing okay, but I just yeah, it it was this strange thing where in my brain I didn't really feel that nervous, but this leg mm. didn't get the message. That and thing as well. And my hands were shaky and you sweaty. That, and that thing where you're like you don't want to speed through it, so you're no, trying to keep no. a, a nice steady pace because obviously the nerves kick in. Oh, and, and you're. Your half hour set list is all of a sudden like 10 minutes and you're like, where the hell did all my songs go? It's a horrendous thing. I mean, I, I don't know, I'm sure that everybody's got different ways of coping with it, but I, I still get nervous. I, I just, I'm able to cope with it yeah. better than I used to be, but... Um, it's weird though, I, yeah. I always give someone credit, even if they're, they're not if they're, if they're not great, you, you've got to have some nerves to get up in oh, front aye. of a pub yeah, yeah. and uh, pick up the guitar sing into a microphone yeah whether you're amazing whether you need a bit more practice it, it's i don't think people realize how nah. how tough it can be because the other thing as well without sounding like big, up there, just... but without sounding big headed is it the majority of the if you go to the pub and there's someone playing in it yeah they've probably played a million gigs they're going to be pretty decent because they, yeah. they could do most of the songs in their sleep but it's like if you're good at doing something you make it look easy yeah yeah no i know but, um, and you see it as well as that you all have had this the amount of times somebody comes up to you at a gig oh I play the guitar or I sing can, can I play and <laughs> I usually just tell them no but <laughs> if they, I ca- <laughs> occasionally you've seen it if they, if they get up all of a sudden oh actually they only really know the chorus they don't actually know yeah, the yeah. words or actually they're bloody awful they can't there's, sing or... there's sort of two dangers with that isn't there <laughs> there's like one 
they're either completely awful or drunk or not clean yeah. over or whatever. Or the other one is that they're absolutely amazing and you've got to go back yeah. up or them. then encourages <laughs> others in the pub to then uh-huh, come up yes, and ask because they yeah. saw that person doing it. <laughs> but I done a gig recently in Stirling and uh, as usual there was a big group of people in and a guy came up. Well, we'd, I play the guitar, so would I be able to get up? Yeah. And you don't want to be rude. I know. But I I'm know. like, oh no, sorry, that's like the bar, you know, I'm, I'm playing this gig, they're paying me, uh, Yeah. you know, I don't think the bar staff is a good would, line, would yeah, the bar staff it. wouldn't be happy. Two minutes later, <laughs> I've just asked the bar staff, they said it's absolutely <laughs> fine, and I'm like, all right, and I kind of look at them like, oh, I hate you. <laughs> you know what? Who did you say that? I was like... Oh, right, okay. I never normally let them get up, but yeah, I let the guy yeah. up. He was actually really good at singing. So I was <laughs> like, right, this oh. is not too bad, actually. Yeah, uh, got off with that one. <laughs> it, I, it turned out he was actually the singer of a band, right. like a covers band. So he was just like, right, we'll you do like three nine. or four songs, but he'd done them inside out. So I was like, Aye. but un- that doesn't happen very often, though. <laughs> Normally it's just somebody drooling into the microphone that's too drunk and like, well, look at me. <laughs> I was just thinking with my, my solo gigs, how they kind of came, came about, because it was, as I say, open mic sneaking on at the grand old breaks and stuff. But Can I just also, ask, see, yeah. you're saying open mic, but I've never done an open mic. Have you not? No, no. Not at all. <laughs> but is that, is an open mic whatever you want to play so you can get up and do an original or a cover? Yeah. Or what do most people do? Well, most people mics? do a cover. Right. But is, um, that pe- is that like a wee stepping stone? Is that people just fancying maybe trying to get into it and yeah, see what it's like? I think it, it'll be a mixture. It's definitely, I'm, I'm sure almost, well, except for you. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure yeah. almost everybody. I'm sure um, first, that's what it is. First, first had a go at an open mic just um, for a taste of how it feels to play live and stuff and maybe it's, and, it, and it's a little bit of a bug where you get up and you and it's hor- horrifically sort of you know the nerves and all that sort of stuff but, are horrifying but, if you, but you want to it. go back and then you want to yeah. go back and i used to go to these open mics every week but um i think when i started getting into the the shows was doing shows myself was through black static because um we kind of we get offered these gigs of two hours in a pub and stuff mm-hmm. like that we didn't have two hours <laughs> songs yeah so because i played some covers myself it was like oh well andy can do half an hour and, and yeah, yeah. And, and wiggy would probably do half an hour so as i've well. heard this with loads of people and then it just expanded into uh, i've heard this with a few guys doing the two hours. Uh, <laughs> liam ian whitfield uh, all these sort of guys saying that uh have they got the opportunity to to get a gig yeah yeah and they're like right you've got three hours and, and they're like oh, I've, I've only got an hour and a half but they're like We'll just do the hour and a half, and then by that point everyone's drunk, so then just do it again, <laughs> and nobody will notice. And I can remember, I can remember, Whitty, I think it was Whitty telling me that uh, probably must have been maybe his first gig or one of his first gigs. Yeah. He said he was so nervous that uh, he was in the car park outside, and he, he phoned them up to say he was sick, and he, he went home. I think oh, it was Whitty. Well. I might, I might be wrong, but I'm sure it was Whitty seems, that said seems that. Seems really sort of together guy to guy as well. But, yeah, um, <laughs> But he was like, he was so nervous. Yeah. Even they know that now, because you go and no, see no. him and he's, he, he's sounding all right. He's, you know, <laughs> no, eyeballing I remember everybody. When, uh, <laughs> I remember when I was first, I think Tam, Nicky Tams would have been the first one that I tried to do. And um, so I knew the, the the slot that they had, but yeah. the, coming up to that thinking, two hours, you know, how, how am I going to be able to speak at the end of so two hours? So, for less so thing, when but... you started doing <laughs> your actual, not the open mic one, see when you started doing your actual like a pub cover it's, gig yeah, yeah, it's usually it's three it's hours been, 9 yeah. to 12 or that yeah how did you have three hours worth of stuff uh i think i think i used to take the nicky tams ones because it was two hours and then right, okay. gradually learned more songs and i probably got to the point where i well i definitely got to the point where i had three hours of stuff whether they were all good yeah. I, don't, yeah. I don't know and then you're <laughs> like right i now need to learn another three hours because i'm so bored with this first three hours <laughs> yes. of songs that i've played a million times aye something like that yeah <laughs> right i know it's it's getting the uh, it's getting three hours worth of you can't really get three hours worth of bangers you know it's just you've got to have some that are i'm still trying <laughs> <laughs> i don't know and are you still doing cover gigs no i've not really done it because i've ages. seen obviously you i know you've we'll talk about it in a wee bit uh, you've aye. got your stuff coming out but I wasn't sure if you're still doing actual cover gigs just for me no, to be that. I never completely got into it to be honest I, I, I did it off and on for a bit and mm-hmm. um, I was never up to the, the grand old standard of like twice a weekend or any of that stuff it was 
maybe two gigs a month. He, he, at my he would probably laugh at you now if you said twice a week. Uh, yeah, well, I think he was true. Yeah. His, his dream weekend where he gets a new rest, <laughs> put his feet up in a cup of tea. <laughs> uh, no. But I thought about kind of going for it, but um, I would have had to buy my own PA, which I never ever actually did. Yeah. Um, I kept on begging and borrowing and stuff and, and taking gigs yeah. that Liam would have to cancel and things like that, and he'd give me a PA, but yeah. it was, uh, yeah, I just, I, I don't know, I, I did. I really enjoyed it, but I was also doing Bad Elephant at the time, and I was probably getting more interested in that just because it was originals. So, hey, that just interests you, yeah, because and it and doesn't matter what spin you put on it. You're still doing cover songs in a yeah. pub. If you're doing it just to make some extra cash, brilliant. Yeah. There is, but there is this weird sort of um, there's people that do it, make extra cash. That's great, no problems. Aye. I think there's other ones that kind of get a wee bit lost, thinking, "Oh, I'm going down brilliant here," but. Uh, you forget that they're just doing cover songs in a pub. See if you were doing yeah. like three hours of your originals and you know, the students crowd surfing their way to the bar and that, you'd be <laughs> like, that, this, is, this is great, I've got something here. I, I think yeah. I'm not about to make it. But uh, see if you're just doing like, oh, this is another killer song. Or... <laughs> I mean, at, at first, getting up and playing covers was, that was like a dream come, through, come true, you know, I didn't even think of. And it was probably just fun. Between covers and originals, well. yeah. It was just, like, I can't believe I'm standing in a bar playing. Um, playing two hours of music or whatever, or three hours of music, but um, yeah, probably just because I had that band on the go at the time, I got more yeah. more interested in the originals and just did the occasional the occasional gig, and then eventually didn't really bother after a while. So here's a question for you: what's the what's the best thing and the worst thing about a pub gig? A covers pub gig, and uh, I, I mean, a I covers one. I've never really done an originals pub gig yet. But, um, I'm not brave enough to do that yet. No, either. no, that would be a full gig of me. I don't know. <laughs> um, the best thing and the worst thing. I mean, I guess it's maybe two depends on the punters that are in. It's probably two sides of the same coin, really. Which yep. is, if you just get everybody engaged, even if it's just for one or two songs, mm. everybody engaged and paying attention, and maybe they give you a wee round of applause and all that. It's just you know you're buzzing. Yeah. But if it's the opposite, <laughs> which I've done a lot of, <laughs> nobody's even looking your way. Yeah. You know, you can take that for a few songs, but if it's an entire, yeah, hour I've, I've took it for three hours. <laughs> it gets a wee bit depressing after a while, but you know, I've done quite a few. We, we last call. I must be needy. Or. Thank you. <laughs> and it's just like there's big bits of tumbleweed floating <laughs> oh, by, and uh, like, crickets. You guys can do this. Come on, and give me a wee clap. See how many times that happens, though, right? And it ha every time it ha it's the same. It's the same setup. No, no claps, nothing, no acknowledgement. You feel like just greeting, oh, right? No. And then you're like packing your stuff up. It happens every time. Somebody, Somebody comes up great. and they go, "Mate, I really, really enjoyed that. That yeah, was great." Yeah. And I was I've like, had... well, "Why the fuck did you know clap then?" <laughs> I've had that one because as well. all you need is one person to clap. Yeah, yeah. And it kind of encourages the, the others. That's why, like, when me. There's almost that thing where sometimes group. a full room and they're all scared to they're all scared to be the first to clap. Right. Sometimes if it's not like hugely busy and you just That's like me and my pals go just clap. If we're going to see like one of the guys uh, playing, they're just a total bomb scare, like, just <laughs> screaming and shouting and clapping. But at least you've got a cheering squad for that like, your full three hour gig. Yeah, yeah. If nothing else. <laughs> and that but uh, so see knowing what you know now. Mm. See if you could go back to your younger self. Would you? What would you tell him? Would you? Depends uh, how young, I suppose. I mean, there's don't give up the piano. <laughs> there's uh, take music. There's, like see, see if it was but, me, right? Obviously, like I, I played in bands. For, I was always like teenage years, and then my most of my twenties, I was in bands. Yeah, yeah. And uh, kind of similar to yourself, I kind of like I was still playing the guitar. Yeah, but yeah. I kind of got out of the whole, you know, playing, I was, certainly wasn't doing gigs or yeah. that, and I uh, came across um, Liam when we were working together, he just started playing gigs, so we are like, well, we'll come along and we'll, you know, cheer you on, and then it was like, oh, you play guitar, why, why don't you bring yours and you can come up and play some lead guitar while I'm playing, and yeah, that's kind of yeah. how, how I kind of got into it, and um, but if I could go back, I would probably... Because I didn't start doing solo gigs. Yeah. This will probably uh, freak you out. I don't think you used to do them at the I, time. At the, no, the snake skins and all no, that. No, no. 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 I only started doing solo gigs two years ago. Was it only? Right, aye. So, la sorry, last year was the first year I'd ever done a solo gig doing rhythm and singing. Wow. I'd never done it. I'd always, just, I'd always played my band 
or being like the lead guitarist. Yeah. Um, uh, which is what to, we to did. somebody else, and which I was is what quite, we were building up to the snake skin. And I was quite the, happy with lead. that. Aye, but if I could go back, I would probably be like, you know what, you should have probably just put some money aside, and got yourself a PA. Yeah. Ten years before that, it's a good investment. I mean, and just yeah. um, and started doing the gigs then because the other thing that I've noticed as well, see when we were starting out in Stirling, yeah, you had um, Drew neighbours. Yeah. You had number two Baker Street. Yeah. It was obviously O'Neill's, it's now Molly Malone's. Uh, right? Yeah. I think those were the three big places for well, yeah, I suppose you've got Nicky Tams maybe as yeah. well. But those were like the three kind of the main places for doing gigs. And settling? Maybe, um, yeah. I mean you'd get them and but you get the corn exchange and stuff like that. Uh, but I well, think those three were the main ones. But see, when you go in now, it's like there's so Everywhere. many play. Uh, every single place you go to yeah. does live music to the point that it's almost like there's too much. I know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I know. I sort of wonder about that sometimes. It just seems like because it was quite cool. You could go in like I'm going in Sterling on a Thursday night. You could be like, well, if I want to see live music, there's my three choices. Yeah, that I'm kind yeah. of going or to. Or if I don't, then yeah. there's somewhere else or, to go. But I don't. Was, or if you didn't want you go somewhere else, whereas now it's like. It's almost like you'd always get a good crowd, but yeah. it's so kind of separated now because there's so many places doing it. My my main problem with it is just that nobody's really putting anybody on doing originals, mm -hmm. which I, and I, they're businesses. So at the you end can, of the day, you can sneak <laughs> one in now and again. I know, but, but it's it's just I think the live music thing got kicked off by I don't know if you it, you know the bulge stuff that Liam and well, Tommy and that were doing. That's and that was I mean there was plenty of bands doing covers. But that's how I met that was Liam. A lot of original bands. Uh, that's how I met but, Liam because my my pal's band was playing one of the nights. Now I, it, yeah. it wasn't the Corn Exchange. It was the one next door to it on the corner. Aye, uh, it was Cape. Cape, but right? It might not have been Cape but yet. It was something else. My pal's it. band from Glasgow was playing there. So me and my friend were like, right, we'll go along and sort of yeah. support them. They get there, and there was a decent crowd. There was obviously uh, two or three bands playing. It used to be heaving some Yeah, and some I'm, I'm talking to Sunday, my I think. I'm talking to my friends, and then I'm like, "Well, I, I know, I, I know that guy. He works in the same contact centre as Aye, me. It's Liam." <laughs> so I'm just thinking that Liam's there just, just to watch the bands. Aye. And he, he kind of came up, like obviously recognised me, and then we kind of got chatting, and he's like, "Oh, I'm actually." I'm putting this thing on. You yeah, know, me, yeah, me and this other guy. And Tommy and he's he's pretending yeah. he's doing the sound. He's just like, Ooh, we'll just like <laughs> move all this stuff about and see what happens, eh? And uh, but that's how we got. That was the only bulge gig I think I ever went to because I, right. I wasn't aware of that, and it wasn't until he told me afterwards. Ah, yeah, got good big. But I think he was. The I think it sort of well. kick-started a, a live music scene in Stirling that wasn't really there. But the funny thing did was they, they that they put once gigs it, on at the Fanky Hut those. Yeah, well. they did they ran the Fanky Hut thing and they started doing gigs at the Foo Bar and stuff as well before right. I think it all eventually kinda of fizzled out. But the thing was that lots of the other pubs in Stirling thought, you know, Cape's getting a big crowd for live music mm -hmm. on Sundays. We'll put live music on. But every single one of them went down the, the covers route and I just thought I can kinda see why though. I can see why though it's the it's the safe option Aye. that you want you know, a lot yeah. of people don't want to hear. No, you've I got know. to have the right crowd, and I'm guessing that's why you. I've seen you've been in King Tut's quite a bit recently. <laughs> yes, I know, However, yeah. they're very much geared up for giving at. Right, let's hear your originals. We're, oh, we're not really yeah, interested yeah. in. There's plenty. If you want to go and play covers, there's a million pubs you can go and pick in Glasgow to go yeah. and do covers, uh, and it's a cool setup. Yeah, I know. Is that how did you get into? Do, playing the gigs there is that just this year that you started That's, doing that yeah just a few months really so um ah, this the story with that was i went on to a radio show um on cam glenn radio and that uh, was was that the one there was a, a woman that kind of yeah, interviewed you and uh, you played Rose, a few songs Rose bartley yeah, her, um and she's been brilliant um she, she she played my songs and then she got me on for a wee interview and a yeah. session and stuff which was great and then while I was in there, live on air and stuff, she was asking about upcoming gigs. And I was like, well, I don't really have that much just now. I know, I listened to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she's going, oh, well, you need to speak to Mick Cargan. Oh, she gave you a wee contact. The next morning, she basically messaged me saying, hey, Mick's got you in the King Tut's so bar on Sunday. So that was that was it. And and Mick runs lots of song clubs around Glasgow. And so I it... just kind of get through to 
as many as I can manage with the uh, family See, in, life. In and King stuff. Tut's, is it downstairs or is it, or is it upstairs it's or is it both? Both, yeah. When I first went through, uh, I wasn't sure and I was thinking, oh, maybe the main stage, but it was the bar, <laughs> but that was still cool. And uh, The main stage is pretty cool. I, and I think I've played the bar, maybe, maybe it's just twice I've played the bar. Um, and the way that Mick runs his song clubs is he does he does about three or four of them. Yep. And he'll he'll kind of reserve the slots on the main stage, which he does once a, once a month, mm -hmm. for those who play all the other ones that aren't the main stage sort see, of thing. So you have to you have to. So see the gig you're playing there. For them. What is your time slot as and how how It's just long? two songs. Is yeah. it just a couple I, of songs? I think it will depend how many people even are on there. the. the the main on the stage. main stage, I, um, it depends how many people are there. On the main stage this time, it was two songs. I mean, that is the one everybody wants. So there was like 20 people playing. But if you've got um, 20 people and they all bring two people each, you, I know. you've got a crowd. It was a decent, uh, it was, it was a, a, a decent a, a decent crowd on the day and stuff. And they I seen your video and you had people <laughs> know, dancing was... and everything. <laughs> I was well chuffed with the reaction. And... Right, so here's a question for you, right? Yep. You, you've started doing your originals, right? Aye, ah, yeah. How do you, what's your method in writing oh, a, a no. song, right? So see for me, right, you might be the same, you might be different. See the amount of times I'm listening to something on the radio or yeah. driving home or that, and I get, I'll get a lyric a right. idea in my head. I can write an entire song, lyric-wise, nine times out of ten, though, that um, nothing ever comes of it. Right. But... So pretty much I've always got to come up with the music first and then I come up with a melody and put make up sort of lyrics to it. I do have loads of lyrics written down. Right. Very rarely do they actually turn into a tune though. Yeah, oh, I wish I had more lyrics. I'd, so I'd how, do. how do you do it? Um, lyrics tend to come last and most of my unfinished songs are just sitting waiting on lyrics that I've never got around to. Because I, I feel like I need a spark, I need a song to... Even if I'm not making it obvious to others what it's about, it needs to be about something to me for me to spew out the lyrics kind of thing. Because it's funny, I talk, my dad asks me, and he goes, uh, like, about how do you write that? How did you come up with that? that my dad, doesn't, strange, my dad doesn't play, <laughs> he doesn't play any musical instruments. He, he loves listening to music, but, yeah. so, it's completely foreign yeah, to him. Yeah. So, he finds it crazy, like, how can you just cut him up with something? I know. But then, at the same time, he paints, I'm like, well, how can you just sit with a canvas and, like, mm. paint I mean, it's something? It's the, same, it's the same idea, <laughs> I suppose, but... I know. You, so you're the, probably the same as me, as in, come up with the guitar, the yeah. tune first, and then think the lyrics last. There's... I've come up with different ones in different ways, a little bit, but um, probably the most common thing is for me to just come up with some chords, mm -hmm. and usually try and just move my fingers about and make one of them at least something that... I don't hear every day. Not, not do, a G or a C or a D. So do you go e for? Because I always think there's there's two types of there's two types of songwriters. Yeah. Right. I'm in the category of. I I don't think I'm technically very good, but right. I, but I think I can come up. If you were to say to me, go and write a song. Yeah. You've got 15 minutes. I could probably come up with a verse, chorus, verse, right, chorus okay, kind of thing. Right. And try and make something, <laughs> try and make something catchy. I've got friends that technically they can run circles around me, like yeah. on the guitar. That they're absolutely amazing. If you said to them, "Go away and come back in a week and write a song," they couldn't do it because right. they spend so long focusing on the technical part. That, uh, and it, I, technically, I'm not good enough. It's that a way. Bit... So I kind of feel like I fall under the one of, yeah, you know, I, I try to be simple, but catchy as hell that's exactly the uh, same as me I'm, I'm sort of not really trying to reinvent wheels or anything like that i just want something that sounds at least a little bit original and mm. vaguely catchy but i think the best songs of of mine are ones where somehow or other a uh, the tune has come into my head or at least part of it do you I think if i can get a tune or a lyric ideally a tune and a lyric into my head yeah. then i can usually develop something half decent do you write Sometimes them I get no. I, well, that, actually, that it does vary. They usually take a while, but um, yeah. some of them have come fairly quick. Quickly. See when you hear so, so, some of these um, like, like super famous songs, like, like yeah, I don't. I think it was Noel Gallagher that was had said that. Um, I don't know if it was Wonderwall or Don't Look Back in Anger, but it was right. like 
it was like 10 minutes, you know, ah, he's, 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 like, done. he's like, we're in the studio, <laughs> oh, we, need, we need an extra song, the guys had went round to the pub or something like that, they yeah. like, oh, give, they'll be back in 15 minutes, and he just comes up with something that's 30 years later, it's like an anthem, it's still massive, and uh, kind of, maybe it's because maybe it's because there was not much thought put into it, yeah. but then at the same time, I'm sure he's probably got songs that he's had to work on and work on, and it's a wee bit, I think, uh, I think when it works, it's, do you remember those things that were big in the kind of late 90s that were the, the 3D image things, mm -hmm. where you had to like look at it in a certain way? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And if you can't, if you can't understand what you're supposed to do, you can just spend hours looking at this thing yeah. and wondering what everybody else is doing. <laughs> I think songwriting, songwriting's almost yeah. a little bit like that, where if you overthink it and you try too hard, yeah. then, well, maybe, you know, maybe you'll come up with something, but often it's the ones that just come out fairly quickly you know i tend to i tend to spend a few days working on them and stuff like that before i feel like they're there but mm -hmm. usually the the best bit of it comes pretty quick do you think <laughs> you're getting better like as a songwriter compare yourself now to 10 years ago compared to 10 years ago yeah um it's definitely fits and starts and i feel like i need to probably get more of a routine of sitting down and but then you've also playing regularly and life. stuff like that. You've got I know, work, you've that's got kids, what's tricky. So... And uh, and since I've started this round of going to all these song clubs and stuff, I've I've come up with wee ideas, but I've not managed to write very much. And but you can also get in, because also get inspired by hearing so many different Definitely, people yeah, doing yeah. different types of songs that I you know. just wouldn't normally even listen to, probably. Yeah, I absolutely. But there's at least one of my songs that was kind of it, it doesn't really sound anything like this guy's song but it was kind of inspired by just seeing somebody at a song club doing something and thinking you know you could make something like as simple as that or whatever it what the way he was playing the guitar or something just made yeah. me think of something right that was a bit so different. I, I had a wee look right correct me if i'm wrong uh -huh. so this year right 23rd of june well done <laughs> released circles That's single it's just got the one song circles right yeah it's a full band playing it is I listen to it, right? <laughs> to me, it's, it sounds like the Verve cross with Radiohead. Right. Oh, Radiohead, right. Yeah. The start right. definitely sounds Verve, I think. But, uh, but uh, in a good way, <laughs> right? 13th of September, 2023, What You Wanted single, right? So it's yeah. still got circles on it, but it's now yeah. got What You Wanted, so it's the two songs. This has been right? a waterfall strategy. Yeah. I looked up on Again, stuff online. <laughs> I'm thinking the Verve, Radiohead, a wee bit of Travis kind of feeling All right, to Travis it as well, mean, right? Then. And then 15th of November, Breakdown single, so you've got the two previous ones and you've now got the song Breakdown, yeah. right? Full band, right? I actually thought this one, the Breakdown song, I put Travis, I put early Foo Fighters. Yeah, it was there, there was right? definitely a Foo Fighters. I remember that band that. Ash. Oh aye, yeah, yeah. Kind of like it, it really reminded me of the, that level the first of heaviness, Foo Fighters album. Yeah. It's where it's rock but it's not it, it kinda you could get it on the radio. It's not aye. you know, it's not too rocking. The but producer who recorded it all, I think he mentioned Teenage Fan Club for that one as but well. Also, I suppose um, it's that sort of level. Of, it's not it was very super heavy, but it's a wee bit heavy. But stereophonics as well. Aye, yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's that kind of. I don't know. Which if, is a lot of the stuff I listen to. Well, I don't the, know if you're intentionally intentionally huh? doing it, but it is very. I'm um, like all these bands you go. That's all the nineties. So that's that's <laughs> the, the stuff that you were inspired with right at the very beginning. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but I, I bet you you, you bit didn't intentionally do that. No, which is um, quite cool because it just means there's something in your head that's just coming out. I've been told Circles first, but I think I kind of can now. I've been told Circles is a bit Beatlesy, which mm -hmm. I can kind of hear a little bit, and especially the sort of the pre-chorus is a bit sort of a Beatles kind of rhythm or something. Yeah. To it. And so I suppose that's some of my younger childhood coming in as well. Although so I'm still listening. Question for you: too. Who's 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 playing the band? Is that you? Um, all the, no, all no, I'm definitely no. not a, a, a one-man band sort of person. So the rhythm guitar and vocals is all me. I think. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I think that was all me. Um, I did have another band that we've not mentioned, which was uh, a few years ago, about five years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. Tried to get another band going when I was singing and doing Was this after the snake guitar. skins? Yeah, this was <laughs> this was me kind of trying to get back into music after a few years out. After looking the after snake kids. skins destroyed you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and that's kind of what kick started my songwriting because I maybe only had a couple of songs at that point. Yeah. But um, a friend of mine, Neil, he's a singer songwriter, but he wanted to play the drums. 
All right, okay. And he wanted to do my songs, and I've kind of gone, oh, we've got two songs, but I better get writing. Two songs so, is a good starting uh, point. Yeah, so that's where I'll, I started writing a lot. And uh, Neil was travelling from Edinburgh, so he eventually, like, it was logistically difficult. But yep. in the meantime, my na- my next door neighbour, Martin, started playing the bass for us. Yep. And uh, another guy I know, Darren, started playing lead guitar. Yep. When Neil left, we found out that Darren could play the drums. We didn't even know this. Oh, right. he's he's talented. So it, it kind of fizzled out again just because it was hard to get people together at the right mm. time. But after that, I kept on writing songs and I wrote these songs. Yep. And I sort of thought, you know, I really want to get them recorded. And so I spoke to them and they, they were up for being involved and just Where did jamming you... like mad to get them yeah. to get them nailed and then recording. Where did you record it? Uh, it was through in Glasgow. It's a guy called Dave Simpson. So, mm-hmm. so basically, uh, using using contacts, it's not what you know, it's who you know. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> so my dad, I don't know if I've ever mentioned, but my dad uh, used to write and direct adverts on the TV. Right. Okay. So I was speaking to him, and then a little bit of a sort of my latest band is kind of fizzled out a bit. How I don't really know where songs. I'm going with music. I've got these songs. Yep. I feel like I just I feel like I need a producer or something to help me with them because I tried home recording. Thinking I'll just learn that. He's like, I don't think I'm going to learn that so easily. Why doesn't this sound good? (laughs) I've fallen into that trap a lot. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, my dad spoke to people he knew and just to try and find somebody who might be a good fit. And Dave was fantastic. Uh, Yeah, just agreed with him a deal to to get the the songs recorded. I think he initially said three songs because it would be a push to record more than three songs in a day in the was studio it all recorded in, Was it all recorded in the one day? Is that the same session? No, it was recorded over months actually, but the right. drums had to, he wanted the drums to be recorded in a, a day just because that was a part of the cost yeah. he was paying for the studio. And he was like, you'd be pushing it to get more than three just drum tracks on, nailed in a day. Yeah. And so that, so I spoke to him about, well, possibly could we make it an EP and have four songs, but one doesn't have drums. Yeah. That's where what you wanted came from. So, it's just those songs just now. Do you have I've something? I've got a fourth one up my sleeve. Uh. So, <laughs> will you release the fourth one at some point and have the other three available on it as well? Yeah, yeah. The fourth and one will be the EP. The, the the confusing release thing is just something I saw no, online where right. it was uh, if you kind of like if you release a single and then the next time you release a single you put that mm-hmm. single was track two then you maybe just get a sneaky few streams on the if it's track two of your so thing. that is that the st- starting point for maybe like an album i'm hoping so yeah and if um, you were doing an album would you include those sort of like re-record them but I, I don't think i would re-record them i think i think dave's or just got start them adding to sounding. what you've already got yeah i think they're as good as they're gonna sound so no, um, they're sounding good well, uh, good to my ears anyway aye, so and there's, there's uh, lots of different influences that you can well i can hear aye yeah the, i know i, I try and I, I struggle to write um, songs that sound too similar. I mean, I, I could do it, but mm. if it sounds too much like one of my other ones, I tend to bin it. <laughs> I just kind of, okay. it's um, yeah. I feel like I'm a fraud or something if I write another mm. one that's the same. <laughs> so, last question for you, right? Uh-huh. On um, the other podcasts and bits and pieces. Yeah. Mount Rushmore. All right. You've got <laughs> the choice of like bands, musicians. Who is your four that you just put up there that you're just like they are just perfection head and shoulder and above and stuff yeah uh, and I'm going to ask every funny. other person this so it should yeah, be interesting what each person they'll have time to think about it now <laughs> <laughs> assuming they watch this <laughs> true yes I know that Paul Simon is the one right he's probably I mean he probably is my favourite musician of all time really I think he's fantastic uh, who else is really the funny thing is I'm, I'm th- it's all it's all like 60s and 70s folk I'm thinking of, despite these sounding quite nicky although, songs. Although most but, people would argue that's that's the best era. I know, yeah. For creative music. Although I don't think I've got anything that sounds anything like her. Maybe it's partly a vocal thing, but uh, Joni Mitchell I think I would put up there. She was really right, okay. a big influence at one point. That's two. <sighs> in no particular order. I know. This is so cliche, but I think I will say Hendrix because there was a time when yeah. I was listening to a lot of Hendrix and just really wowed by. One of the things with Hendrix I find is everybody goes on about his guitar playing, obviously, why wouldn't you? But I think his songwriting is 
Brilliant. I think some of his songs are fantastic. I'm not a massive Hendrix nah, no, no, fan. I've got yeah. a couple of his albums. Yeah, yeah. There's no denying his impact, but I know. It, it's just not my not thing. for you. Um, who else did I put on Mount Rushmore? Good. So all these people at the moment are in your sort of late 60s, I know, early 70s. Oh, Gallagher. Even though I've probably gone... I feel like they're not, they're not as big a band for me as they used to be Oasis, but I know that... I wanted to be no Gallagher when I picked up the guitar. It was, I'm not it was kind of because yeah. of his. I'm not an Oasis fan at all, but there is no denying. Yeah. He had a knack of writing some catchy tunes. Yeah, yeah. And, but, and they which were have kind also, of accessible. They've also you, stood the test of time. <laughs> they stood the test of time. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's, he obviously was doing something right. I know. Yeah. And uh, probably the last big, big huge movement. Yeah. Music wise. Aye, I think it was. I don't think you've ever really. I don't get think there's been anything since two thousand onwards. I don't think there's there's definitely not been anything like that four or five years in, in the mid nineties. Yeah, I think it's all it's so much more atomized now, isn't it? It's like people are all listening to different stuff. So you think Mr. Noel Gallagher might be the, yeah, the fourth I one? Yeah, he, I think he'd sneak in there. To be fair, his big miserable face up there on I the know. I mean, on the mountain. Well, for his, <laughs> For his flaws, he's, uh, I probably wouldn't be playing a guitar without him, so... <laughs> and will do we get back together? Oh, I'm sure they will, yeah. The money will just get too big at some point, won't it? Just need to add a few more zeros, do you think, and then I it'll think be the good money, to go? Yeah, the money will get too big. And just put maybe some type of screen more. between him and his brother, so they... Uh, they'll probably... I mean, I think they genuinely don't get on, but I think they'll probably pick up a wee fallout as well, just to keep it interesting. If this was just a lie for all these years that actually... <laughs> their best pals. Their best pals, and they're just like, we'll keep it going, because they'll keep offering us money, and then we'll just <laughs> yeah, be able yeah. to pay off our drug debts from years <laughs> back when they annoyed everybody. Yeah, no, they'll definitely be back together. I think probably fairly soon, though, because yeah. everybody's doing it, and... Yeah. Right, Andy or Randy Viper, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> yes. So, Cheers, until next Good time. See you as well. Right. <laughs>